my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, I'm Vanessa Samina and welcome to the fam. So the fact that you scrolled through YouTube at this point in time and decided to click this video is no coincidence because today's readings are all about messages that were meant for you. These messages are meant to be. They are here in order to give you some really important information on your life. They're here to give you some important information on your current situation, some motivation, and ways in which you can successfully move forward with life. So in my last reading, I used these postcards by Colette let Baron read and these all come with messages directly from your spirit guides and because you all loved it so much I'm going to be doing the same again today I'm going to be ending each one of your readings with a message directly from your spirit guides from these postcards so make sure that you stick to the end of your reading in order to hear those important messages so for today's groups the gems are as follows we have the rock crystal also known as a clear quartz. Then we have the labradorite, we have the rose quartz, as well as the polychrome jasper. But you guys, the timestamps are down below in the description box, as well as pinned to the comment section. And this crystal set can be found linked below as well, this exact crystal set. But don't worry, I'm going to be doing a close up of each one of these crystals at the beginning of all of the readings. So if you're interested in getting this exact set, feel free to tune into the beginnings of the readings in order to see what the crystals look like a close up. So yeah, you guys, I don't wanna to spend too much time within the intro. I prefer to spend more time within your individual readings. So I'm going to be starting off with the first group, which corresponds to the rock crystal and to all of my other gorgeous groups. I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the rock crystal, which is another name for a clear quartz. This is what it looks like up close. It is literally so gorgeous. This stone is a stone that helps you clear out any sort of negativity. It is great for just cleansing. So this is what the back looks like. The back is raw and then the top is polished, which is just kind of the best of both worlds, if you will. But I wanna move into the messages that were meant for you in order to figure out exactly what you need to look into in your life. So we have the trickster as well as bells. Okay, so group number one, I want you to know that I'm a very honest tarot reader, so I will tell you exactly what I see. And I hope that you can appreciate my honesty as well as me being direct with you. So in the trickster as well as the bells, I want you to know that there is a situation in your life currently or coming up shortly where there's somebody that you need to look out for that most likely cannot be trusted okay that is one thing that i see in the trickster so in front of you they kind of have one persona and one face but then behind your back or when you're not there they're kind of a different person and how you will be able to recognize this person is by bringing this up telling them that you have a weird feeling or that you know they told you something that wasn't completely true and just calling them out on their bs there's no other way to say it group number one so i want you to know in the bells that how they will re react is by deflecting okay that is going to be their natural reaction to deflect to say oh you know it's not how it seems that's not true it's not completely what they meant and so on and so forth so of course, there are some people that are in that situation for a particular reason. If somebody is trying to surprise you with something, of course, they're going to deflect, they're going to try to act like they don't know what you're talking about. But if this is somebody that you've been having a weird feeling about, or you've kind of had this lingering sensation that this may be a toxic relationship, a toxic friendship, then I want you to know that this deflection is kind of a confirmation that they are aware of what is going on and they're aware of the role and the part that they play within this. Then we have a plant medicine as well as bones for casting. So one thing that I see here in the plant medicine is the fact that, you know, the truth will come forth. Group number one, if you have been wondering about a situationship, about somebody in your life that you're just really a bit unsure of, I want you to know in plant medicine that things are going to be revealed. You're going to discover and uncover truths that maybe you would have rather remained hidden or rather not really focused on, but there's going to kind of be no way around it. And in the bones for casting, I see that divination can really help you kind of get to the bottom of this, as well as just 
being aware of certain like synchronicities in your life. So if there is, for instance, a number that you keep seeing, that could be kind of a sign in correlation to this truth that needs to be revealed about this person who is maybe not quite here for the right reasons, okay? So that is one thing that I want to point out to you. Furthermore, in the bones for casting, I also want you to know that there is not really any point in kind of like overthinking this. It is going to come to light anyways. So I kind of see like this sense of relief. I see the sense of relief from you because you sometimes like to be the detective in these situations, but it is also kind of just great when you know like, fine, you don't need to do anything. Whatever happens will happen anyways, like whatever is meant to happen. And there's no point for you to meddle or kind of like come in between of the divine process within your life. So the same goes for love, okay? If you've been having a weird feeling about a romantic situation in your life, I want you to know that all of the truths that are relevant to the connection are going to come forth and it's kind of undeniable that you're going to get to the bottom of what you needed to know in order to make that decision on whether you want to stay, whether you want to go, and whether it is worth giving this person the time of the day. Then we have the tower as well as the two of cups so one thing that i see here group number one and again i'm going to just be brutally honest with you okay that is just something that i consider my duty here on my channel in the two of cups we have one of the most favorable cards when it comes to love in the tower we have a card of destruction we have a card where things are falling apart and you kind of have to rebuild and reconsider the foundation on which you built your old relationships upon. So one thing that I see here is if there is a romantic situation that you're not sure of, that you've maybe felt for a long time wasn't quite where you wanted it to be, this may come to an end, but there is a new beginning coming pretty quickly. In the Two of Cups, I see that you may even be overwhelmed by how quickly like a new potential love comes into your life. But I want you to know in the tower, not to fear destruction of a relationship, not to fear obstruction, because there are many relationships that are good for a certain amount of time, okay? Not every relationship is meant to be in your life for eternity. Some people enter our lives for a reason and for a lesson. And sometimes you are in people's lives in order to teach them things, in order to kind of contribute to who they become as a person. We all have that duty. So I want you to know that it's important for you to not freak out if you feel like things are falling apart and the tower is just the card to hit the nail on the head to tell you like, oh yes, okay, this relationship was doomed, I should have known. This is all a process. This is all a learning lesson. I want you to know that not everybody is going to be the one, obviously. If not, there wouldn't be singles out there. Then everybody would just be with their very first boyfriend, girlfriend, partner. So that is obviously not the case. And it's completely okay for certain relationships to not work out, whether it's after two months, two years, 20 years, you know, it really depends on how long that person was meant to be in your life. So it's important to just be thankful for the experiences that you had and all the positives that came out of that situation, but to know that sometimes it is time to let go in order to make room for a new person and a new connection. As I can see here in the Two of Cups, that that is one thing and that is coming towards you, undoubtedly group number one. But let's move further into your reading. We have the Dolphin, we have a Resilience, as well as the peacock. So I see here that your guides want you not to worry. Your guides feel as though like you worrying is really just not helpful and it actually shows that you're maybe a little bit doubtful of your value or of how easy it is for you to go out there make new connections, whether they're romantic or platonic. I can see in the peacock that it is time for another glow up, another mental glow up, okay? So don't go out and buy a ton of clothes online or a bunch of new makeup or hair product, whatever it is that you like to purchase in order to make yourself feel more attractive, that is not what is actually going to confirm to you how much you're worth. What is going to really give you that feeling of, yes, I'm like worthy, my standards are high and it's cool, is to actually like mentally glow up, to mentally level up and see yourself as, you know, this beautiful peacock, like this beautiful being that can raise their standards, that doesn't need to put up with the things that they don't want to put up with. And I can see here in resilience that 
you're going to have to kind of rise above people who are trying to tear you down when it comes to that okay group number one this message was meant for you because you're truly still undervaluing yourself and valuing yourself as much as you should is a process you know just as people who are narcissistic, it's a process for them to learn to be less narcissistic, to be more considerate of others, just like it's a process to learn to maybe put yourself first more often or to allow yourself to feel good about yourself. That is also like not a one step thing. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And this message is for you because you need to be reminded that it's okay for you to raise your standards for yourself and love. It's okay for you to just be happy. You don't always have to be productive. You don't always have to be doing something because one kind of like issue that I have with today's um, like society and just how things are, it's almost glamorized to be tired, to be burnt out, to be working 100 hour weeks, to never take a break, to never take downtime. And it's almost like you have to justify when you do like, oh, I'm taking the afternoon off because I worked so much or because I have this appointment. How about I'm taking the afternoon off because I want to? You should not feel guilty for that. And that is a message that I see that is really important for you. Maybe because you have been overworking or kind of just been feeling bad whenever you wanted to take time for yourself, time to recuperate, time to just do the things that you love doing, which is of course not the goal in this life. You're supposed to feel comfortable and to be able to take a reasonable amount of time for yourself whenever you need it because otherwise you're just going to give out a compromised version of yourself when you go out there, when you're with your friends, when you're with your family, whereas if you make sure that you're recharging and you're balanced, everybody's always going to be able to benefit from the best of you because you're in a good place with yourself. Then we have the lovers as well as the three of pentacles. So group number one, I want you to know in the lovers that this is an indication for romantic love, okay? The lovers is just that card that indicates a relationship on a romantic and kind of like intimate level, if you will. And I want you to know in the three of pentacles that you're going to meet this person in a social setting, which means that it could still take a while for you, group number one. It could be at a party, it could be like in a place where you know, you're just kind of meeting up with friends or family and you're having a good time. That is one thing that I see in correlation to the dolphin as well. So I want you to know here in the lovers that patience is something that you might need. As I said, you're going to meet them in a social setting. And if you're already in a committed relationship, I don't want you to shy away from just allowing that energy that you had at the beginning of the relationship to spark back up and to come back because Sometimes, you know, it gets lost. Sometimes it's just kind of not, I mean, it never is the same. Every moment is different. Every moment is fleeting and you can't exactly recreate any kind of feeling or any kind of situation romantically. But you know what I mean, you can get back to that phase where things were exciting, where things were different and new and get back to being maybe a little bit more lovey-dovey, a little bit more close, if you will, you know, physically, mentally, and that is one thing that I see, kind of like a re reigniting of this passion, re reignition of romance. You guys understand what I mean? So that is one thing that I see for you when it comes to love, the message that was meant to be. So I want to move further into the postcards that are coming directly from your spirit guides. So these are important messages that are meant for you that you need to hear right now in order to improve your life and make sure that your future is exactly how it needs to be in a way of you know prospering and just living an abundant life. So let's see what your guides have to say for you. Unlock your magic, group number one. Dearest you, Going the extra mile to achieve your dreams and putting in some overtime will reap big rewards. Now is the time for you to act, to stir up some energy and put those plans into action. There are many windows of opportunity that open but close quickly when you don't take the risk and go for it. Today, be confident that your hard work will pay off and you'll feel that satisfaction and fulfillment of reaching your desired outcome. 
it might turn out even better than you expected. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Remember, however much work you're willing to put in, we will match it tenfold on our end. Everyone over here is rooting for you to win the game of life, so just do it. Loving you so, so much. <laughs> okay, so the group number one, and that is the message directly from your spirit guides that was meant for you. I really hope that you enjoyed this reading. I hope that you found it inspirational. I hope that you found it motivational. I hope that it gave you insight as well as just kind of peace of mind. So group number one, wherever you are in this world, I hope that you're having an amazing time staying safe and I will see you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello group number two and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Labradorite, which is honestly the most gorgeous gem. It just like has such an amazing kind of like turquoise glimmer in different spots depending on how the light hits it and it definitely just shines differently in natural light. So at the back this is a stone that is raw but still very gorgeous and in the front it's polished so you kind of have like the best of both worlds. Wor <laughs> You kind of have the best of both worlds. So I want to move into your reading to figure out exactly what messages were meant for you and what you need to hear. So we have buried in earth as well as fire. So one thing that I see here is that it's very important for you to kind of like unbury and unleash the things that you are passionate about. Okay, so in fire I see here that your passions is something that your guides are trying to point out. So if you, for instance, were always very passionate about drawing, singing, just creating things, but you kind of lost that passion or you felt like you weren't as good because maybe you Googled other people's work or you kind of saw what else is out there and you thought like, oh, maybe I'm not that great at this. Maybe I just kind of need to look for something and that I'm better at, or maybe it's just not my field. Maybe it's just, I have to stay in my lane, which is obviously not true. There's a reason why you have to hear this message. And I see here that buried in earth is some passion that is like grasping for air, that is grasping for you to give it attention, for you to invest time in it again. So if that is music, know that it is your duty to kind of see through your talent, to not just let it suffocate just because you had moments of doubt or moments where you maybe fell out of love with the craft because you just felt like there was a lot of pressure on it unnecessarily. So this is one thing that I can really relate to. Music and singing, I've always really been into, but when there was actually, you know, grading and pressure on it, when it came to, you know, academic school, um, it just kind of took away the fun, you know? And it, sometimes it can be, you kind of fall out of love with it until you're out of that situation. You're maybe done with your school, you've graduated, and you can then move into a space where you're doing it again because it's fun and not because you have to, not because you're looking to get a good grade because what conventional schooling really does is it punishes mistakes. And in life, you know, the biggest winners are those who are not afraid to make mistakes, are those who are actually doing the direct opposite than what we're taught in school. Because in school, you're punished for making mistakes. And in life, when you make mistakes, you learn and you're able to do better the next time and utilize that wisdom that you wouldn't have had if you were too afraid to do anything out of the ordinary because, oh my God, what if I make a mistake? So allow yourself to still be free at heart and in your spirit that is something that you're meant to hear right now and then we have the drum as well as the cave okay so I see here that you just kind of like need to retreat into your shell into your room into your little creative bubble creative space that is one thing that I see in the cave and I don't mean with creative space or into your bubble stay in your house haha ha, we all need to do that right now no we're, we all know what's going on right now. We don't need to discuss that in this video or in this channel. Everybody else is discussing it. What I mean is retreating into a space where you feel like you can create. Retreating into a space where you feel safe, where you feel like you can make those mistakes. You can sing a horrendous note. You can draw something that you think is hideous and you don't need to fear anybody seeing it and having to explain why that's what you're doing. and 
you don't have any pressure of making something pretty, of making something beautiful. You have the freedom to make something that is maybe you consider to be ugly because sometimes we just need that. When you're naturally somebody who is creative or an artist, you sometimes need to create something that's ugly to you. You sometimes need to create something grotesque, if you will. So in the drum, I want you to know that just being able to make those mistakes is going to awaken something within you. It's important for you to hear this because without making those mistakes in your life you will not be able to kind of um, activate that part of you that is unafraid so you might have been a bit much in this like um, bubble of not making mistakes maybe because that is what you have been taught as a child or in conventional schooling or at your job it's kind of like the same thing people who make mistakes get punished people who try new things and it doesn't work out get ridiculed so that may be why you're kind of in that mindset or why you feel that way but i see that you have to reawaken the part of you that you know is kind of like a little bit rebellious, a little bit of a risk taker, and is not afraid to try something new and knows that there is value in making mistakes. Then we have the King of Cups as well as temperance. So I see here that in correlation to your emotions, so there may be somebody that is kind of trying to tempt you, okay? That, that is one thing that I see in temperance in correlation to the King of Cups. In the King of Cups, I see somebody who is wiser, who is older, who is more knowledgeable and has more control over their emotions. So they may be a little bit of a player, okay? So one thing that I see in temperance is they're kind of like playing on your emotions because they know exactly how to get into your soft spot. They know exactly what to say in order to make you feel like, oh, well, you know, maybe I should give them a chance. And one thing that I see here in temperance is that you also kind of have to decide how you want to balance things. You know, do you want to play along or do you know exactly that when you get a little too close to somebody like this, that they can suck you all in. So it's just kind of like playing with fire. It's like addiction. We all have a different threshold. You need to know for yourself how close you can get, for instance, to really horrendous food, to alcohol, to drugs, how close you can get to those different substances before you get dependent on them, you know? With drugs, for some people, it's like they smoke one cigarette and then and that was it. They're addicted for the rest of their lives. And then there's some people who can just have one every now and then, but they can stop anytime. They can say, okay, I'm not gonna have a cigarette for the rest of my life from today onwards. And you know, you just kind of need to know your boundaries and what you're drawn to, you know, what you can kind of, what you have the tendency to become addicted to, if you will. And then we have the Eight of Cups as well as Justice. So one thing that I see here in the Eight of Cups is that you have to keep in mind balance, okay? So don't be too hard on yourself and know that there's some things that are okay. So if you're slightly addicted to food, you know, I feel you <laughs> remember too, and you just can't let go of the bag of Cheetos or chips or, you know, the cake, then it's okay. It's not really that big of a deal as long as it is within the reasonable realms. Life is all about balance. And that is one thing that I see that you need to hear in justice. You're not supposed to be perfect all the time. You're not supposed to be this cookie cutter person. You're supposed to be you. And you have ups, you have downs. You have things you're good at, you have things where you struggle. And you also have things that are kind of your guilty pleasures and it's okay to have those. Don't kind of diminish them just because you think, oh, I have to be all around perfect. You don't. Then in the peacock, one thing that I see here is just the fact that you have to raise your standards, okay? I see that there are certain people, certain parts of your life where you're maybe like almost dumbing yourself down or making yourself seem less important to others than you actually are, okay? Others will take credit for things that they didn't even do. Meanwhile, you could be, you know, somebody to walk the moon and you wouldn't take credit for it. You will literally, literally pretend like it was somebody else. Like it's not even you in the photo, even though we have the cold hard evidence because you don't want to brag. You don't want to be the person who is coming off as kind of like arrogant, but I see that it's important for you to just be okay with recognition because deep down you want recognition. We all want recognition and just depriving yourself of it and telling yourself like, oh no, like I just would rather be a bit more modest and humble. Like there's a time and a place for that, but there's also a time and a place where you just 
take your award, awards or rewards. You just take the recognition and you say thank you and you just enjoy it for a moment. And then we have a competition, we have choices as well as moving forward. So one thing that I see here is that there's an area in your life where you're maybe kind of competing and it's not healthy for you. This could be love, this could be your career, you know, competing for, for instance, a job, competing for somebody's affection, somebody's love. And that is obviously something that contributes to you kind of not feeling as worthy as you probably should feel or kind of not feeling as valuable as you truly are. So I want you to know that you make that choice, okay? And even if that is subconsciously, you have to work on it. There is no excuse for allowing your subconscious to kind of direct you into a place in life that is not healthy, that does not resonate with who you want to be. You have to move forward with positive change. You have to move forward making the choice consciously to move forward in a way how you know that you're putting yourself as the first choice, that you're putting yourself into a space where you don't feel like you're competing for bare essentials such as somebody's attention, somebody's love, like a job, okay? When you're in this competition mode, you cannot enjoy love, you cannot enjoy working, you can't enjoy anything because you're just in this constant anxiety and fear of Oh, like I really hope I can keep them I really hope that I don't lose this job and it's not enjoyable and not healthy so it's important for you to move forward kind of making that a thing of the past so if you have to leave your job if you have to leave your relationship do so because it's not the right thing for you anyways if all it does is stress you out so group number two we're moving into your postcards with messages directly from your spirit guides and these are messages that were meant for you okay so i want you to pay close attention to what they have to say so we have a wild love let's see dearest you you have we <laughs> okay again <laughs> dearest you we have a secret for you the more you think you know the less you actually do so if you're willing to keep an open mind you will avoid the narrow confines of the know-it-all and open up to the unlimited potential that can be discovered only by the curious optimist. Curiosity allows you to discover new things, see the world from a different perspective, and find answers to questions you might not even know you have. Right now, whatever is going on, it's important to know that you are not aware of all the aspects of it you need to see to make an informed choice. You might be projecting a story that isn't totally true, so moving forward, your mantra could be, I don't know, or that's interesting. As you keep your mind and heart open to new experiences and a richer existence overall. All of us over here want you to be all you can be. We are cheering for you. Can you hear us? <laughs> so group number two, those are the messages that we have directly from your guides. Those are messages that are meant for you. So we're at the end of your reading. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative as well as motivational. Let me know down below in the comment section what really hit home. And if you made it all the way to the end of your reading, congratulations, leave a little whale emoji down below in order to let me know. And I will see you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello, group number three, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Rose Quartz, which is obviously a gorgeous stone who does not have a gorgeous rose quartz definitely needs one i absolutely love this gem it is the stone of love friendship as well as just like empathy and understanding so i want to move into your reading so we can figure out exactly what messages are meant for you so we have water as well as sea creatures so we have a lot of emotional energy here okay so you may be of a water sign or the person that you're trying to kind of like be pointed out to the person that you know your guides are trying to point out to you is what i'm trying to say is of a water sign is somebody who's fairly emotional so one thing that i see here in these sea creatures is the fact 
that it is okay for you to fall in love. Group number three, for some reason, this message is meant for you. It is okay for you to love. It is okay for you to go to a place where you're vulnerable, to allow yourself to express that vulnerability by being the first to say, I love you, by being the first to say to somebody else just how you feel deep inside about them without feeling kind of embarrassed or feeling like you're saying it prematurely. So maybe in the past you've been hurt or you're in a spot where you're very afraid to love again, but for some reason this message is meant for you. You're okay with just putting yourself out there, okay? Things will be fine. It is completely, it is completely meant to be for you to love again. As much as you may be trying to fight against it or as much as you're afraid of it, one thing that I see here is a lot of love and expression of love. Then we have the altar as well as air. So one thing that I see here is that there may be some energy of somebody who is no longer in the vicinity of your life. So this could be somebody that has passed, this could be a pet that has passed, somebody who is close to you or was close to you that is no longer in, you know, at kind of like arm's length in a place where you can reach them very easily and one thing that i see in the altar as well as air is that you can get creative when it comes to communicating with them when it comes to making them a part of your life you don't always need to unpack the urn or go to you know a graveyard or something like that of course you can and that is your choosing but one thing that i see that is meant for you here is that it is okay for you to connect with people in a more creative way where you're for instance all of a sudden making a connection between numbers that you're constantly seeing that are like this synchronicity for instance if you keep seeing the number 444 four, four, and you keep asking yourself why is this number constantly showing up when the clock hits 4 44 p.m and you know you hear something that reminds you of say like a pet that you had or somebody that used to be in your life that could be their way of communicating with you so when you kind of make those connections you learn how creative also life in the universe is when it comes to reconnecting you with souls from the past <laughs> <clears throat> and souls that are just no longer with you or no longer able to communicate with you on the earthly plane. And then we have temperance as well as the eight of cups. So one thing that I see here in temperance is just the fact that it is important for you to take enough time to recuperate from unhealthy habits, okay? So this could be for instance, drinking too much, this could be too much coffee, this could be just too many unhealthy foods and you've kind of fallen into a slump or you kind of feel here in the Eight of Cups that you're just looking in the mirror and maybe almost like a little bit um, disappointed in yourself because you're like, oh, I did it again. I ate a whole pizza by myself or a whole pack of donuts and trust me, been there, done that. But it's kind of also important for you to know that like we all have those moments. You're not alone in that and you're not the only one who's struggling with unhealthy habits and getting them under control, but also finding the right kind of way to binge every now and then to not feel like you're completely missing out on life. Then we have the King of Cups. So in the King of Cups, we have, oh, okay, your cards are speaking for yourself. You have the King of Cups as well as Justice. So in the King of Cups, we have somebody who is also connected to the water, just like we have here within your reading. So this could be somebody entering your life that would be a perfect match for you when it comes to love or romance. And if you're already in a relationship, know that water signs right now are signs that are very soothing to you. Water signs are often signs that are very empathetic, that are understanding and also loyal and protective. I want you to know here in Justice that a water sign can bring you back into balance more than you ever expected, okay? So certain people in your life can just change everything. Have you ever gotten like the right message from the right person and it turned your entire day around. It just made everything so much more enjoyable and so much more relaxed. And that is one thing that I see that you need to hear, okay? That person is out there. There are a few people like that within your vicinity and it's important for you to let them in and to allow love in and correlation to them. Then we have the Seven of Cups. Okay, so we have a lot of this energy that is close to your emotional home, okay? The Seven of Cups is all about kind of understanding 
that you have choices, but the choices that you make and that's what's important because sometimes you can self-sabotage when making choices and that is why we're here. That is why you have tuned into this reading because you need to hear that, hey, you can stop self-sabotaging. It is not normal. It's not something you should be doing. It's not something that's okay, but sometimes we get so used to it that we just kind of think to ourselves, oh, well, this is normal, you know, and it becomes a habit, which it should not be. Always make the best choices, even when it comes to the outfits that you wear or the kind of care that you take of yourself. You may sometimes think like, oh, like, I don't want to ruin this outfit. It's not the right occasion. Let me just wear my everyday attire, which is in a form self-sabotage because you're telling yourself, oh, you know, like today isn't good enough for that or I'm not good enough for my favorite clothing today, which subconsciously instills this kind of lack of love for yourself, which can vary. Some of us, you know, it's a, a big hole, a gaping hole. And for some of us, it's just kind of, you're just missing that little extra inch to really showing yourself the appreciation you deserve. So look into that, look into all those little habits and try to just wear what you want to wear every day. Put on the amazing makeup, perfume, products that you've been saving because every day is a blessing. Every day is a gift. You don't have to wait for a special moment in order to feel special. You should feel special every day of your life. And we have the seven heavenly virtues as well as memories. So we did speak about like loved ones. We did speak about past loved ones. One thing that I see here in memories is just the fact that, you know, things are going to be coming up from your childhood. And I see here in the seven heavenly virtues that you have the opportunity to make that childhood trauma something good. I mean, one thing that we all have or had was a childhood and we've all come out of it with you know strengths weaknesses different types of anxieties and each of us have been through different levels of trauma i mean some of us have been through trauma that was like physical you know emotional spiritual some trauma you know is a little mixture of everything so we've all been through things that have shaped our reality in the now but another thing about that is just that you can look back at things and say to yourself because I went through that, I'm the person that I am today and I can unlock things for myself through those experiences as well as unlock things for other people. So for instance, if you were physically abused as a child and you know that you survived it, you came out of it stronger than ever, I mean of course who wants to go through that? That does not mean that you were meant to go through that or that you know there was any particular meaning, any good meaning about that. Sometimes in life, things just happen that are just crappy, you know? There's no other way to say it. But now you have kind of like this conviction to help others. You have this conviction that if that can't bring you down and that can't ruin your life and your future, nobody and nothing to come will. And it just gives you this different kind of strength, this different determination that other people in other situations may not understand and will probably never be able to feel because you know you can't recreate an experience or feeling. People can can emphasize empath, empath, empathize, sorry, and try to, you know, say that they can imagine what it feels like, but they'll never truly know. But I want to move into your postcards that are full of messages directly from your guides, and I want to figure out exactly what they have to say to you at this particular moment and what messages that they felt were meant for you. So we have to celebrate life, group number three. Dearest you, you have a unique purpose and destiny that only you can fulfill. But first, you need to know that destiny isn't a destination. You don't arrive at some special place where poof, you're perfect and happy all the time. It's about establishing and firming up a commitment to a certain experience, whatever form that takes. Your soul knows that you need to experience. Your destiny is to be present to all of life's adventures. To discover your talents and full potential through allowing inspiration to lead you and to risk standing apart from the crowd to listen to your soul. You are special as much as you are also paradoxically one with the world, individual yet part of a great whole. Both 
truths have led you to this moment where we are saying you are on the right track. Even if your ego self doesn't see that, listen to your soul, check in with spirit, keep going. Spirit loves you, life loves you, we love you. <laughs> so group number three, this is a reading that I received for you. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed your postcard. If you did, leave a little balloon emoji down below in order to let me know that you made it to the end of your reading. And I will see you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello, group number four, and welcome to your reading about the messages that were meant for you. So you chose the polychrome jasper which is such a gorgeous gem, nice choice group number four. So I wanna get straight into your reading about what messages were meant for you. And in correlation to the polychrome jasper, I can already tell you this is going to be action packed. This is going to be packed with getting things done and just doing life, but let's move into it. So we have the middle world as well as the medicine mask. So one thing that I see in the middle world is as we spoke about in the polychrome jasper, you have to just live in the present moment and not shy away from getting things done and now, okay? Stop procrastinating, stop telling yourself you're going to do it, be authentic. And sometimes being authentic, one thing that I see here in the medicine mask is that you have to also just be real with yourself when it comes to your weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. We all have things that we're not very good at. We all have things that we know we do in a way that is not exactly helpful to life and our achievements. And sometimes you just need to tell yourself, look, I gotta be honest with me. I gotta just tell myself I'm going to procrastinate this. I might as well just do it now because at the end of the day, it has to be done anyway. So procrastinating it is really just cluttering my life, my headspace. What's the point? Let me be in the present moment. Let me just be honest with myself in the present moment and make the best out of now. Create, you know, an amazing future in the now because just focusing on the future and not doing anything in the, in the now is just going to have you be in the now forever, you know, in that same spot. But you understand what I mean, group number four. We have the tree of life as well as stone people next. So one thing that I see here within your reading in the tree of life, if you're looking for something about fertility in the tree of life, I see that it is an important message for you to know that you have like this inner clock, this inner feeling. So it's important for you to listen to that. There are days where you're going to know exactly this is not my day. This is not a fertile day, be it good or bad for you, depending on your situation, but you know. I want you to know here in these stone people that so many, you know, ancestors of ours just had to figure it out. They had to go with their intuition. They had to go with their natural instincts. There was no doctor, no book, no podcast to tell them what to do next and how to deal with like everyday issues, be it with fertility, be it with health, be it with mental anguish, okay? They just had to kind of follow the natural rhythm of their body, what nature provided for them, and that is it. They didn't have any other help, and it's important for you to know that you can rely on yourself in that sense with many things. Often we overreact, we overanalyze, we overthink. You know, you have one day where you feel like you have a little bit of a headache and you're already worried that you're gonna have like a whole migraine. And why are you worried about that? Because we know these things exist. And because we know they exist, we can sometimes kind of like speak them into existence because our mind and our energy just flows towards everything that we're like, oh my God, I hope I don't get this illness, this sickness. I hope I don't, you know, end up with this kind of mental state. And because we're focusing on what we don't want, sadly, we don't realize when a lot of intention and energy flows in that direction instead of focusing on, oh, what can I do to be healthy? What can I do to nourish my body, my soul, as well as my mental health? So try and focus more on that instead of attracting what you don't want closer to you because that can have a very, um, very dire, dark, fatal outcome that we sometimes do not even notice. You know, this day and age of having information at your fingertips is great, but sometimes we just use it to freak ourselves out and we have to stand up to that. Then we have the Three of Cups, we have the Eight of Cups. So I see a lot of contemplation. I see that what you're really meant to hear is that you have to speak to somebody when things are freaking you out too much. Somebody who is not going to freak out with you, but somebody who is going to tell you, look, it's okay. It's okay to feel freaked out. It's okay to overanalyze, but you know, somebody who like grounds you at the same time. So there are people who tell 
tell you it's okay in a way that makes you feel like I'm fine. It's okay for me to react this way, but I would probably be even like in an even better situation if I were just to be a little more chill about it. If I were just to allow myself to take a little bit of time to just exhale and put myself into a calmer headspace. Then we have Justice as well as the Eight of Pentacles. So we have the number eight show up two times within your reading. I want you to know that in numerology, the number eight is a number of prosperity and abundance. I want you to know here that in the Eight of Pentacles as well as the Eight of Cups, there's kind of not as much work that you have to do in order to be successful in your career as you expected. You know, a lot of our success financially or just academically in our career, a lot of it stems from emotional intelligence, okay? Academic intelligence is a certain portion, but emotional intelligence often has a bigger impact on whether we're successful or not because our emotions can get in the way of our success. No matter how smart you are, how matter, no, mat, no matter how smart you are, no matter how badly you may want something in this life, I want you to know in justice that those who will be able to acquire these things or those who will be able to follow through with their dreams are those who have their emotions under control. So if you're a fellow water sign, you may think to yourself, damn, I've already lost. But that's not it, okay? I want you to know that having your emotions under control has a lot to do with cheering yourself on. It has a lot to do with putting yourself in a space where you believe in the good of it all or you'll just want it not at all. And what I mean by that, with that cheesy quote, what I mean is that you know how sometimes you really want something and life steers you in a different direction, life doesn't give you what you want. Then you think to yourself, oh my God, I'm so happy that didn't go through. So for instance, if you wanted to start up a business a restaurant, just, you know, one of those businesses that are now struggling in this time and you wanted to do that right before this big incident happened in our world, um, you, would, you were sad when that didn't go through. You were sad when you weren't able to start your own business, start your own establishment. But now you're thinking to yourself, thank God, because the timing was divine. It wasn't meant to be, and if I would have gotten my way like half a year ago, a year ago, two years ago, maybe right now I would be homeless. Maybe right now I would be struggling so badly financially due to the situation, our current economic situation, that you know, in the end, it would have just ruined me. So know that oftentimes we're being held back from things that just aren't meant to be for us and things that we can't handle in the long run. Then we have originality as well as choices. Okay, so group number four, I see that some of the messages that are meant for you is just how you have to blaze your own trail. It's okay to do things in a way how other people don't understand. So if you, for instance, quit school, quit a job that everybody would have considered to be like an amazing opportunity, an amazing job that you can just feel deep down inside. Like it is not you, it is not meant for you, it is never going to be for you, it is not fulfilling and you make that choice for yourself to go in another direction. I want you to know that you should stand by that. Don't allow anybody to tell you otherwise because often people project their own insecurities and their own fears onto you. And if you allow that to get to you, you will lead a life that will be without your dreams being accomplished, without you making choices for yourself. So know that just like the beauty in making your own choices is already the fact that you're not just like a slave to society, you're not a slave to other people's expectations because you can make your own choices. You can say, no, this is what I actually want to do and whatever you want to do, that's up to you. You have your own life, do it on your own time. So set those healthy boundaries and make sure that you do what feels right for you, even if other people don't understand, no matter how close those people are to you, even best friends, siblings, parents, they don't always know what's best for you because they often say things out of fear, like, oh, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Are you sure this is going to carry, you know, any sort of like herald any success are you sure this is going to bring you to where you want to go in life and that's often because they haven't had the courage to do that in their life so they're like afraid for you because they've never done it before but let's move into your postcard to figure out exactly what you need to hear from your spirit guides and it really just ties in beautifully be fearless dearest you 
Are you taking yourself and your problems too seriously? Maybe fear of the future is weighing on you. We would like you to take a little break from all of that and start having fun. When you stop fixating on what has been making you heavy hearted, we get a chance to move some magic into your direction. We just need you to let go a little. Spirit needs some room and gets very inspired by your laughter when you have fun. When was the last time you got really loose, silly, or goofy? Maybe you need to go dancing or watch some very funny comedy to make you laugh or call the one friend you know will remind you how ridiculous and delightfully giddy you can be. You will return refreshed and renewed and ready to once again see the world as less daunting and you will be ready to receive in perfect timing the bounty that spirit has for you. Don't you just love how much we care about you? So those are the messages that I have for you straight from your spirit guides. Group number four, this is a reading that I have received for you. These are the messages that you had to hear that were meant for you. I really hope that you enjoy them and that you found them insightful and that they sparked a little bit of a thought process within you. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this reading. Leave a little star emoji if you made it to the end of your reading, to the end of this video, and I hope you're staying safe. I'll see you in one of my upcoming readings.